What's up, y'all? Today we're talking about can you lead a man to Christ while dating? I had to talk about this one because I hear a lot of my sisters, you know, struggling with this in some type of way. And I don't mean like struggling as in she's saying like I can lead him to Christ. But I hear a lot of my sisters saying like, you know, maybe we could be together and, you know, I can help him with his relationship with Christ. And, you know, maybe he'll become more of a godly man, you know, from us being together, you know, and, and I just be sitting there like, nah, like, don't do it. Please don't do it. For one, ladies, this is why I say don't do it. For one, it's in the Bible. Like I always tell my sisters and like I'm telling y'all, Adam was with God before Eve showed up. Let me repeat that. Adam was with God before Eve showed up. Now, some people could think, of, well, but God does everything on purpose and for a reason. So why would God do that that way? The man was with God first. He was talking to God first. He was in a relationship with God first. He knew how to lead first. Now, this is not, don't measure leadership based off of what you think leadership is. That's one thing I want to say, because I think a lot of people do, hey, he's a leader, he's a leader because, oh my God, he, he buys me things and he, he has a good job. A leader does not equate money because someone can be, someone can truly mishandle money. It's a lot of people who got a lot of money that don't know how to handle it, don't know how to help, don't know how to lead. But what is a leader? Now, I'm not about to break that down in here. But I would tell you, if you follow Christ, then you need to measure that by Christ. That's how you measure leadership. Jesus is a leader. If he wasn't a leader, how would we know him all these thousands of years later? Right? How are people dying for him? And how were people dying for him if he wasn't the number one top dog, top leader? That's because the father, God, is the leader. He created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. So if you want somebody who's godly and you want them to be able to lead and lead a life following Christ, then you need to pay attention to who Christ is. You need to be able to see Christ, right? Hold on. I said you need to be able to see Christ. So if he not that close to God, right, then how he going to lead in Christ? And what makes you think that you can get him to lead you? Or what makes you think that you can get him or pull him that close to God and eventually he'll start to change? For one, where is that in the Bible? Where is that written? Where is that in a story? That's not there. There's only one thing in the Bible that shows us and that literally tells us that God will be able to bless the marriage Right. He'll be able to bless the marriage. So and it says that God will be able to bless the husband through the wife. Notice I said husband through the wife. If he is not holy, he can use her holiness in the marriage. That is a promise. And that is something that God says that he would do in the in the marriage, not outside of the marriage. So I have a lot of my sisters that's thinking, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he go to church, but he's not that godly. Look at the world, y'all. What have you seen that in this world ever that ma the majority of times that a woman is able to lead a man somewhere? The number one consumers in this world are women, are women. The, the, the top people that go to church are women. And it's hard to get men in the church. Notice I said it's hard to get men in the church, but it's full of women. Why is it still hard to get the men in the church if it's full of women? So that tells you right there that you can't lead him to Christ. Now, if you're somebody's friend, I do believe you can help. You know, I do believe that you can show them Christ in a friendship. But if you're hoping that it will happen, especially for him to be your leader, your spiritual leader in Christ, you can't just think that God is going to do that. You can still be a servant of Christ to this man, 
right? And that can bless him and help him, but there's no guarantee. And I know y'all probably like, well, I ain't talking about guarantee. But don't you want a guarantee from God? Don't you want a guaranteed godly relationship? Not perfect, but godly relationship. Don't you want that? Don't you want a man that's abstaining already? Don't you want a man who thinks about how to love you? Right? How can he do that if he don't have God? God is love. He's the one who created love. He's the one who created you and knows what you need. God is the number one. God is the one who convicts you when you're prideful and when you do things wrong. God is the one who teaches you how to lead. God is the one who, 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 who changes your ways. This world, if when, when you are not following God, then you are following the world. The world is evil. The world is selfish. The world is prideful. The world thinks only about itself. So what do you think? If this man don't follow God, what is he going to bring into your relationship and in your marriage? Is it God or is it the world? Now, I've read statistics on where they actually tested this to see, literally tested this about showing how uh, 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 if a husband pulls weight or has dominion in his home, right? And if a wife can actually pull her husband to the church or pull the family in the same way that a husband does, right? I'm sorry, I don't have the stats here, but I remember reading this and it showed that the wife or the mother didn't have the same dominion, the same power that a father has, right? I remember them testing, they, they, they did a research study where the or the woman was trying to get the, the father to come with her to church and to get the family to go. And it was harder for her. The percentage was not that high towards the women that was able to do that. But when the father was in the house, don't feel no way. I'm just trying to make a point. But when the father was in the house, it showed that the father was able to get the mother or the woman and the family to go to church. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I know y'all might be thinking, oh, Rudy's saying this. And no, I just want y'all to see how things happen. Here's, here's another example. I remember one of my friends, she was cool. We was cool. And she was getting closer to God. This was probably like 10 years ago, 11 or nine years ago. She was getting closer to God. And she would be like, oh, I ain't doing this and I ain't doing that. Because of her relationship with God, she was like, oh, I ain't going to the club. I'm not drinking no more. I'm not doing all of this stuff. But then later I see her in the club because I'm looking at her stories on, on Instagram. I'm like, well, she said, so what happened? And I remember talking to her when things didn't go good for them. I remember talking to her and she brought it up. She was like, Rudy, she said, you know, women are made to be led. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I realized that because I also seen it in the Bible that women are actually created to be led. Literally, y'all follow wherever y'all feel love. Right. Y'all follow where leadership is. This is why women, there's so much, so many women in the church, because when you have a leader, someone who's teaching you and helping you, you actually are attracted to that. Naturally, unconsciously, you follow that. Right. You might not even know or be aware of it, but you follow that wherever you feel love, even if it's perverted love, even if it's love off of what you think love is. Right. You follow that men don't follow the same thing. A man ain't going to just follow this man just because he's a leader. Men go where respect and peace is. There's a big difference. That's where men go. But I remember she told me, she said, Rudy, I know I said all of these things, but when I got into that relationship, she said, I was just, I just did everything that he did because I felt like he loved me. So now she was at the club where he was. She was drinking again where he was. Why? Why? Because that's where she felt love. But that don't mean that it had to be true love or real love or good love. But whatever she felt love or whatever she thought love was or whatever it is that she was craving or whatever made her feel good, feel good from that man. That's where she went. So women follow where they think love is or where they feel love is or where they feel protection or where they feel safety. Notice I keep saying feel. I'm sorry. Remember y'all, I'm in psychology too. So don't get mad at me, right? But no, this is true. It's in the Bible. Eve, look where she followed. What felt good. 
she chose the wrong thing because of what it felt like, right? Several feelings, right? All of these situations happened. I'm not saying this to say anything wrong to y'all, but I'm saying why you need a godly man. Again, Adam was with God first. Now, Boaz was with God first. Boaz was a godly man, right? So that was first. King Xerxes before Esther. All of these situations in the Bible show that you need a godly man to lead you, right? You need God. You need a man who talks to God and a man who, 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 who God talks to for you. How can this man learn to truly love you if he don't go to the one who created love and ask him to teach you or to teach him how to love you? Yeah, he could read a bunch of books all day, but he still don't got nobody helping him. He doing all of that off of his strength, right? Think about it. How is this man going to be convicted when he does wrong? If he don't follow God, how are he going to lead you to church? How is he going to be the priest of your home? How can he literally protect you by thinking of himself less? Because Jesus thought of himself less. That's what a leader does. Jesus put himself to the side for someone else. That's what a leader does, right? The leader puts his feelings to the side for those that he loves, why to protect them? Why to help them? Why to strengthen them? Why to pull them out of something? He doesn't just stay soaked up in how he feels and what he wants. Leaders come, they put themselves second. That's what a leader does. Jesus put himself second. The Bible says to be first, you must be last. That's what a leader does. But how does he know that? If he doesn't follow Christ, why? Because you, because you're going to make him change. Ladies, y'all have a hard time getting us to want to be with y'all. How can you do that? He needs something else to help him. And you need him to have something else, someone else, God, the one who created everything. He will cover your family with God. You understand? I hope y'all understand this. So the answer is, you cannot lead a man to Christ while dating him. You have to come into it hoping that he has Christ already. Because when you struggle, when you sad, when you depressed, when you have an anxiety, when you mad, when, you, when you're frustrated, how does he help you when he doesn't have that strength of God to help him? How? He doesn't have God to help you. You go to God, he doesn't. And we all know that when it comes to God, God reveals things that you didn't know before. He helps you to do things that you didn't think that you could do. He actually does them for you and through you. But when you don't have God, who's going to do that? Where he going to go to? The world, his family, all the fleshy people in his family. Right? When, when y'all need to try, when, when he needs to think of you because of how you feel, as well, when he needs to cover you, when he needs to be there for the family, he doesn't have anyone except for his family or friends or his past hurt will be dictating his life and how he moves off of you. You don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So you have to, if you, if, if you want a godly man, if you want a spiritual leader, that man has got to be with God before you get with him. You understand? He has got to be with God before you get with him. He has got to know the one who knows you before you get with him. You cannot just hope because your emotions will get tied up in that before and then you'll be sad and mad and hurt. And you might even blame him when really you didn't know. Really, it was your choice. So this is the warning right here. But it's also, again, it's also in the Bible. It's also in the Bible. And here's another example. Here's the last example. Imagine being with a man who's been having sex all his life, but you abstain. And then y'all get together. And you tell him, I ain't having sex, so you got to be down with that. And he's like, oh, I'm fine with that. We don't got to have sex. I'll do it for you. He's doing it for you. 
This man ain't been walking that walk before you met him. He don't know what it takes. He don't got the strength. He ain't been restrained himself yet. There's a good chance that he'll cheat on you. Or there's a good chance that he'll tempt you. Because why? It's still there. Why? The urge. He ain't fought it yet. How can he lead you in that area? If he ain't learned how to be in that area. He hasn't learned how to stay and stand. And I'm not saying that sometimes people get weak, that sometimes people don't get weak. But what I'm saying is he doesn't have the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength. He don't have nothing to move in that way. He's literally depending on you. But you get weak. Don't you want him to be able to help lead you in that area? That's the exact same thing when it comes to our relationship with God. And especially y'all, women, y'all want love. If he don't got God, how are you supposed to know what love is? True love. If he don't got God, how are you supposed to learn how to communicate? How are you supposed to learn how to forgive you? How are you supposed to learn how to be understanding? How are you supposed to learn how to be selfless? How are you supposed to learn how to be faithful? How to be peaceful? Right? Where is this fruit of the spirit? If you want to bring him to God. No, no, no. You want the man that you want and you don't want to give up the man that you want for the man that you need. But you need to be able to give up the man that you want for the man that you need. Right? Because the enemy makes himself look like everything we want. But God is everything that we need. So which one are you looking at? Which one do you want? You got to be able to give up what you love and what makes you feel better for God. What you want doesn't matter to God. What you need matters to him. You got to be able to give it up. All right? So I hope this blessed y'all. I know some of y'all ain't going to like this, but think about it and pray about it and read about it. Trust what I'm telling you. That man ain't there yet, and that's okay. He don't got to be some super spiritual leader pastor, but he does need to have a relationship. Notice I said relationship. Not a guy to just go to church but a relationship with God. He's got to be able to restrain himself from things because when you get close to God, you give up a lot of worldly, a lot of worldliness and fleshiness. He has got to have been done that before you get with him. Remember that. Don't let your emotions tell you lies. Don't let the enemy lie to you. The truth is the truth. God loves you. I do too. So I'm trying to give you the truth and the real. You my sister. Let me help you. All right. I hope this blessed y'all, man. Make sure that you pray about it as well. I'm going to get it, y'all, when I get it, y'all.